Hello, welcome to video two from me this week. Um, we're getting a little bit deeper into propositional logic here. We talked a little bit um, about propositions and what they are in the last video. And now in this video, we're going to be joining these propositions with, with um, logical operators. So we're going to just introduce three logical operators in this video. Talk about conjunction, disjunction, and exclusive or. And then in the last video, or two, probably might split this up into two videos, we're going to talk about some other logical operators. A little motivation for this video and the rest of the videos this week. Eventually, what we're trying to build is an understanding of you see this long, big compound proposition. So we've got quite a few logical operators going on here. We've got implication. We've got this conjunction. Uh, well, implication also conditional. Okay, and, and don't worry, these might not make sense right now, but um, just to see where we're going with this. So um, we're also going to talk about these variables, which are actually representing propositions in this con. Let's get started here. Next slide. So just as a reminder here, what's a proposition? So we, we talked about really briefly what a proposition was, um, and we're just trying to build these mathematical statements. And so these are our, our building blocks. It's kind of like uh, numbers in algebra, right? We're, we're using real numbers or complex numbers, and then we're introducing operations. Okay, so propositions are like our numbers, and then we're going to be building operationally just later in this chapter, in this first unit. Um, once we get to the proofs section, which is where we're kind of building with, uh, building towards with all this logic stuff, we're going to be proving that the sum of two odd integers is even. So notice, <clears throat> this is true or false, right? I can, if it's true, I should be able to take two any two odd integers and show that they're even. And so if you do this, you'll find out that you'll never actually get to the end of it. So that's why we need logic and we need to be able to prove this without looking at specific values because we'll never be able to stop looking at specific values. Uh, if you notice here, um, I want you to think about these two here. These are both propositions. We can determine if they're true or false. Um, but actually one of these is true and one of them is false and so again to give you a little bonus opportunity if you send me a quiz or a quiz an email if you send me an email let me know which one of these is true which one of these is false so um, is this one true or false an odd integer can be represented by some integer times two um, an even integer can be represented by some integer times two and um, this is an online class, guys. You got a whole bunch of resources out there for you. So if I ever talk about a word you don't know, you know, just pause it, Google it, um, or pause it, uh, Google it. If you're still not sure, send me an email. Okay. So if you're not sure what this word integer means, um, go ahead and pause and and look it up. Do some research. Okay. I want you to be able to to work on answering your own questions and asking me for help. So kind of find a balance there. Email me. Which one of these is true? Which one of these is false? One's false, one's true. So think about those little guys. Just like you did when you went from elementary school to middle school, probably. Elementary school, you're doing arithmetic, you're multiplying numbers, like 5 times 5 is 25. And then um, you got, I don't know, maybe middle school, you started saying 5 times some number x is 10. So we introduced these variables to kind of generalize this and kind of build up our mathematical toolbox, okay? And that's the same thing that we're going to do with these uh, propositions. So now we want to generalize this and kind of find out more information about these propositions. So instead of writing them all out in complete you know, sentences and detail and stuff, if we can represent them as a variable and kind of generalize different properties of these propositional variables, that'll be really handy down the road here. Um, so, so just keep in mind, we've got, we're going to be representing propositional variables with um, letters, 
just like we do with variables, and it's just kind of conventional, especially in this text, that you represent these propositional variables as P, Q, R, and S. It's kind of like an algebra when you see X all the time. Okay, it's just kind of a conventional thing. It's not, it's not you know, required by any means. You could do smiley face. You could do a little kitty. Uh, you could, you could represent them a lot of different ways, but most of the time you're going to see P, Q, and R. Um, sometimes you'll see capital A, capital B, but, but generally in this text, those capital letters are going to be used to denote sets so um, <clears throat> and we'll get there soon too but thinking back to that definition of propositions remember it's always true or false one or the other okay so just like in algebra where those variables X were representing some number in this case our propositions are representing a truth value it's like the variable container might contain a, um, a number this contains a truth value. And maybe that analogy is not great. Sometimes in algebra, the, the variable might contain a bunch or none. Um, but in this case, this variable is going to represent true or false. We just let a variable represent the statement, and then we can manipulate it and combine it with these uh, logical operators that we're going to talk about. So um, keep these in your, in your back pocket here. We're going we're gonna to talk about Jason and him learning discrete mathematics and finding a good propositions and join them together with operators. Um, so we're going to do something called propositional calculus, which sounds really cool and you can tell your friends you're doing that. Um, but really we're just kind of symbolically manipulating and learning about these operators. So um, we'll be taking those variables, you know, PQRS, and joining them with operators. Uh, and or exclusive or implication. Okay, we're going to talk to all of those, talk about all those, and building these new big propositions, like that one I showed you at the very beginning, that compound proposition that had all those operators in it. Okay, so this is a compound proposition versus something like P. P is an atomic proposition, meaning there's no operators attached to it. It's just one lonely proposition alone, right? And then when we attach an operator to it, we've got, we've got a compound proposition. So just kind of to motivate this section and building here a little bit, uh, to, to let you know where we're trying to go with this, again, we're, we're building up to the idea of a mathematical proof. So we need to understand how to flow through these arguments logically to make sure that we're actually arguing something that's that's true and accurate and uh, another really great thing that we're going to use um, with the information that we build here are logical equivalences and so we'll get this uh, we'll get into logical equivalences in the next couple of videos but the idea is we if we might be trying to prove a statement such as this one we might be trying to prove that if 3 times some integer plus 2 is odd then n is odd and we might look at that statement and not quite know how to approach it um, so the nice thing is here is we're gonna build a toolkit of logical equivalencies so if we prove one compound proposition and it's logically equivalent to another then we've proved both of them okay so in this case actually these two statements are logically equivalent okay um, this is what's called the contrapositive of this implication and we're not there yet we're gonna get there when we talked about the conditional so hold on just a sneak peek here and kind of to give you an idea of where we're building so so logical equivalences are nice um, to help us prove statements and, and understand um, equivalent things that might be more straightforward to prove. So, so we're going to be proving logical equivalencies, equivalences with truth tables, which we're going to actually get into in this video a little bit, and also just by using smaller logical equivalences and and connecting those. Okay, but tautologies and contradictions. So, tautology is something that's always true. Contradiction is something that's never true. Um, so this is kind of a fun example that you can tell your friends. Um, this is a true statement, okay? If X is an element of the empty set, then Kaylee, me, is a green-haired monster. So, so I'm going to argue that this statement is true. Um, so if anyone can send me an email or about why is this true? Why is this implication true? First operator we're going to talk about is negation. And notice um, this one, we only need one proposition to negate. So uh, keep that in mind because the other ones we're going to have to have 
two propositions joined together to use these operators. So negation is exactly what you'd expect it to be. It's kind of like a natural uh, <coughs> operator. It's just, think of the opposite. So it is not the case that P. So let's look at some examples. Again, right, we've got P and Q. These are our atomic propositions that don't have any operators on them. So I just want to think about maybe one of these, and I want to try to negate it. I want to negate P. Okay. I'm going to leave this up to you guys. The negation and kind of ugly, logically kind of stuff would be, it is not the case that Jason learns discrete mathematics. So. I want you to think about how to say that a little nicer, but still have the same meaning. Because that's what you have to be careful with um, when you're writing out these propositions going from symbolic form to the English form, is sometimes the translation can get a little bit um, mushy. So, so just make sure that it still means the same thing. And the way that you could check that is just make sure that it's true and false at the same moments. If that makes sense. So, so think about the negation of P and Q. I think I think you guys can handle that. This is our first truth table. Okay, so a truth table. In this case, we only have one atomic proposition. So we start with our atomic propositions, just our singular one without any operators, and then we do whatever operations we need to do on it. So um, in this case, we're taking P and we're negating it. So we start by listing our atomic proposition. And remember, all our propositions are either true or false. So if we want to list all possible truth values for P, we need to list true and false. Okay? And if we negate it, we just have the opposite truth value. So you want to kind of have these handy, um, I, would, I would write down all the logical operators and their truth tables and have them ready in, in this couple weeks here um, because it seems really straightforward right now probably, but once we get a big one going like that one I showed you at the beginning, it's going to get a little bit trickier to keep track of. So it's important to kind of keep these operators going, start getting comfortable with the symbols and recognizing them. Um, something I haven't mentioned, you know, notation is going to vary from text to text and site to site. So just make sure you're paying attention to the, the notation that's used in this course, in this text, um, just so that when you get to the test, you're not wondering what these symbols mean because maybe we use a little bit different notation then. And so remember, in a truth table, we need to list all possible truth value combinations because that's what we're trying to do in our truth uh, table. We're trying to list what's the output depending on our input of truth values. So we're trying to say what happens if this proposition is true and this proposition is false or vice versa or true true or false false. So I want you to just take a moment, take a minute and think about all the possible truth value combinations. Okay, so I already said said a few, right? So hopefully you've come up with, okay, both of the propositions could be true at the same time. Both of them could be false at the same time. One could be true, one could be false, and swapped, right? So we have four, okay? Now, to like go on to where we're going eventually, think about how many truth value combinations there are if I have three propositions, okay? so. Put that nugget in your head and, and think about it for a little bit, okay? We're going to focus on two for now, but it's good to look ahead and think about three. Okay, so here, here's those truth value combinations that I was talking about. So this is our first uh, operation that involves two propositions, <coughs> a conjunction, okay? Just and, really, um, and it's denoted by this little caret here, okay? I think that and makes sense in the English language. Um, some of the operators are a little bit hard to wrap your head around English-wise, but I think you can wrap around this one. If both of these are true and we join it by AND, is this whole statement P and Q, is it true or false? What if it's true that Jason learns discrete mathematics, but he doesn't find a good job? Overall, is this statement true or false? Okay. Um, and, and remember, you're, you're, not, you're not changing the way this statement is, is stated. You're, keep, you're continuing to state it as Jason learns discrete mathematics and Jason will find a good job. But you're just saying, okay, suppose Jason learns discrete math, suppose that's true. Suppose it's false that Jason will find a good job. 
So we, we take a true statement, join it with and, and a false statement. So, so what is P and Q? Is it true or false? Because even though this is a compound proposition, okay, it still has a truth value of true or false. Okay? So we got to make sure that um, for each of these combinations, we just list true or false. Okay? Piece of information about this conjunction. We want to make sure that we understand different ways that these operators might be stated. Um, because if we're trying to prove some statement, it's really important that we understand what operators are involved to make sure that logically we've proved everything that needs to be proven. So <clears throat> just note that sometimes the word but will be used instead of and. So all they're saying here is this but just means and. So just make sure if you see a but, <laughs> you think of and. Now we're going to talk about disjunction. Or. First, there's two types of ors that we're going to be dealing with in, in uh, our logic, little logic preview here. Um, and the first one is inclusive or. Okay? The way I think about this one, the way I remember it, is that it's only false once. It's only t one time where it's false. It's false if both are false. Okay? So um, this is an okay example. Again, sometimes when you go to English, it's a little wishy-washy, um, but you do your best to try to wrap your head around why these operators have these truth values when you combine them. Okay? So it's an example of an inclu inclusive or. So students who have taken Math uh, 102, uh, College Albert, or Math 115 may take this class. Okay? So this is saying, um, we're saying it's inclusive because it doesn't matter if both of these things are true, it still makes sense, right? If you've taken, if you've taken Math 102, so that's true, you've also taken Math 115, so that's true, if you join it by or, it's still okay, right? You're still okay to take this class. So, so the only time that this would be not okay would be you didn't take Math 102 and you didn't take Math 115. The system's not going to let you into this class because those are prerequisites. Um, it's okay if both. It's okay if just one, right? Maybe you just took Math 102. Maybe you just took Math 115. Okay, um, Or you took both, right? So inclusive or. So only false if both are false. The other one, the oh, moves later. The other one is exclusive or. Okay? So we're going to talk about that after we finish this junction and, and okay so this is the other or that I was talking about earlier um, the other or is exclusive or okay um, the way that I remember this exclusive or is one or the other but not both okay remember with inclusive or if if you took both courses it's okay right but in this case, probably they might charge you extra, right? It, it might be okay, but they're going to charge you extra. What they mean is you need to select. Do you want soup or do you want salad? But not both, right? And we use this little symbol here. Um, and again, sometimes you'll see like X or um, in different, different notations. So just, you know, heads up on that. But that's what we'll use in this course. So <clears throat> what I'd like you to do now just like you did with disjunction and conjunction, I want you to think about the truth table for exclusive or, finish up these truth values. Oh, don't look at that. Next, we're going to talk about um, implication or conditional. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do to try to understand that operator, uh, we're going to have a little party. Okay. And I might just put you guys in my party because <laughs> I yeah, I did this in class and so I had four people come to my party, but. Um, I don't know if I'll have a chance to catch you guys, see if you want to come to my party. So, so come back uh, and we'll talk about implication in the next video. All right, and, and just let me know if you have any questions, okay? Talk to you guys soon.